Okay, folks, I'm about to show you how to make a wall. I'm about to show you guys how to make a wall sconce real quick. This is a wall sconce from inside the house. When I use a, um, I'm using pressure treated wood, some wood scrap, and just basic tools. I'm going to show you how to do how to make this with just um, basic tools, no band saws, no routers. I can't route that wood anyways because it'll shred it like this because this will happen. But I'm going to show you how to make that wall sconce. Obviously, I don't have a, have a lathe, so we're going to buy buy this piece prefabricated. So we're going to start with this, the pressure treated wood, we're going to um, draw our line by tracing this onto the thing. And there's a bug on me, but this right here is this little round thing. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to trace onto this board. The um, board is um, about quarter, three, quarter, three quarter inches thick. So after you got, get done tracing onto that um, board, you're going to take a jigsaw. If you don't have a band saw or you're using basic tools like me, you're going to want to use a jigsaw. going in from a coming out from a garage so from my dad's garage so I don't want to mess up the time you're gonna want to make your entry point point parallel to a line in the um parallel to the lot to a line on the um thing and then start cutting you're gonna want to start cutting with, with all the line parallel to where you're starting the saw. All right, I just finished cutting this piece of wood into the shape. What you're gonna need is a file or two if you want to go to get into, really get into it. And you're just gonna carefully file along the edges until you get a nice bevel or whatever you wanna get. I'm using a really smooth file, so I'm gonna either get a slight bevel or a slight curve. You're going to want to do that on all the pieces you want your bevel or your design on. Now, in order to file, you don't go like this, and like a saw and cut it. You go like this. You got to keep the file moving. You have to keep the file moving, and if you're using a really coarse file, you may need to either sand out the um, things or use the, a file like this, a really smooth file to get rid of um, all the um, rasp marks and everything. I also have a defect removal file in the garage, so when you start filing, start the file on an angle. Don't start it like this. Start it like this. Okay, now that I filed the edges, they're slightly rounded. Like I said, I don't have a very coarse file, so I didn't get a very bad, very good corner. But what you do after you get done filing, you have to sand. You got to start with either 60 or 80 grit. Or if you want to do more filing, 40 grit. 40 grit can be used to sculpt wood too. You're going to want to sand along the edges first with all your grits. Go through the process of all your grits. I use 80, then I use 100, 150, 220, 400, and sometimes I use six, go, I even go to 600, and then I skip to 2000 to shine it. I should be going to 1,000, to 800, then 1,000, but I skipped to 2,000. So you sand the edges that you filed first till they look very good. 
And then you can hook up your sander, which fell off the board when I was cutting, and sand the surface. Okay, you could use the, do the final couple of steps in any order you want. The staining, the um, mounting of the hardware, or the, um, you have to do the lacquering last if you decide to lacquer this project. <clears throat> now, when you're doing the last couple of steps, like mounting and everything, you're going to want to use a strong um, mount for something like this, because this is a small probably very weak joint it's going to be going right here that's where that's going to be going it's of course it's going to be straight like about right here so what's going to happen is you're going I'm going I'm going to use my own method two nails from the nail gun and then I'm going to run a metal screw a metal wood screw into the um Thing. I can't stress it enough about safety. Safety is a good is a good practice to take. This one comes with a bit, but after it, when you're nailing, keep your hand away from the area where you think the nail is going to come through. It might come through here. You never know. A knot in a wood can deflect the nail, and it could come out the side here, and you could be holding onto it like that. And before you know it, you're getting rushed to the hospital because you have a nail sticking out of your hand. After I put the nails in, depending on whether the wood is um, soft or not, I drill a pilot hole and then I run one of these screws in. I run one of these screws in and then I, um, that's how you mount something like this. A small um, piece of wood onto a piece here. In case you're wondering, oh, why didn't you um, drill the mirror hole? This particular thing's not going to have a mirror on it. If you want to do the mirror without a router, you drill a hole in the roundest area, like a round area here, then you cut around it with a jigsaw. <clears throat> All right, so, and then if you and then you could put a mirror in it and then put one of these back on the back. You can also nail one of these on. This one's stapled on, obviously. And then you could stamp your credentials on the back of it, your business stuff. This is just screwed on and nailed. It's got one screw and one nail in it. This is going to have one screw and two nails. So do that and you should be fine. Oh, and one other thing, do not put your hand under where you're going to shoot the nail or you'll be rushed to the hospital with a nail sticking out of your hand. I think that should hold. Nail there, nail there, and a screw in there. So after you're done this, depending on which step you did first, you could um, stain it. If you stained it first, then it's a little... If you stained it first, that'd be um, a little better. After you're um, done doing all the sanding and everything, you could put lacquer on it, you could put anything on it. <clears throat> it's best to preserve these knots and everything, because knots give wood character, in my opinion. I mean, if you don't want knots, you don't have to have them. You just get better wood. I'm using 88 cent pressure treated wood for the um, body and a piece of um, cheap pine from Home Depot as the um, ledge. But now we're gonna go over to this bucket of stain over here. <clears throat> you can choose whatever color you want. <clears throat> I got dark walnut here. Yeah, I got two cans of dark walnut here. <clears throat> and I got a um, very light can of stain in there. You're going to want to use, like maybe this old sock, it's got dirt on it. You're going to want to use something without dirt on it. You could use a sponge brush. You could use a, um, do not use this for shellac or the shellac will dissolve this brush. 
and you got um a rag here I got a couple modes of um a couple ways to apply it a b sponge brush a rag and a sock the rag will work the best because it's a better way to apply things <clears throat> now in order to um correctly apply stain with a brush do not treat it like paint many people go like this you could do it with a sponge brush but if you're using a paint brush you brush side to side to get the most stain out of the brush <clears throat> and if you put too much on you take a rag and you gently wipe it in the direction of the grain when you apply stain you go th with the grain is if you go against the grain your wipe marks will show after you get done that <clears throat> you can put lacquer on it you could put polyurethane on it you could put whatever finish uh, finishing um, touches you want on it eventually a, a little sconce uh, candle holder is going to go on the end here and then I'm going to um <clears throat> I don't have it yet but a, scon a little candle holder is going on there so we could put a candle on it I'll show you the finished product when I'm done so I just finished staining it I stained the I stained the back too to get rid of the um problem areas and the stain doesn't accept very well to um pressure treated wood because the wood already has a high moisture content so if you want a better finish you're going to want to use the um drier wood pressure treated wood has formaldehyde in it which stays wet this is the finish you're going to get with regular wood Now I didn't put lacquer on it because the customer I'm building it for does not want lacquer on it. He wants it to look very old and rustic. So this is the um, finished product. If you would like to order one of these, you could um I'll leave my I'll leave the um as a matter of fact you just leave a comment in the um comment section if you want one and I'll tell you how to get one all right that's all for today